welcome to the Royal Daily Tea YouTube channel. Please be advised all of my videos are for entertainment purposes only, based 100% on my own opinion, my own theories, and my own research. All of my information can be found on the public domain and falls under the fair use guidelines. Please feel free to do your own research. Hello, and welcome back to the Royal Daily Tea. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. There has just been so much royal news as of late, so I'm trying to get through all of the stories. So today we're going to talk about the bombshell that was released last week as part of a new book by Christopher Anderson, uh, where he basically said that Prince Charles was the royal family member who made comments in regards to Archie's skin color. Now, as we know, back in March of 2021, on the infamous Oprah interview, Meghan and Harry pretty much told the world that a family member was making some quote-unquote unsavory comments in regards to Archie's skin color. But the interesting thing about that conversation where they let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, was they did it in a way where they didn't name the family member. So of course, it could be anyone. Was it William? Was it the Queen? Was it Charles? Was it Camilla? Again, which it's still very dangerous when you release that kind of information saying someone's a racist, but we're not going to tell you who, that's never going to leave my lips. Then what was the point of bringing that up on national television? He wanted to put this negative seed out there to tarnish and to hurt his family, much like Megan. How Megan is putting those negative seeds out there to tarnish her own father and her sister who's in a wheelchair. Now Harry, learning from his wife how to hurt his family, puts out this implication with one, no proof, and two, he didn't name who the person was. So now you're just saying, oh, they're racist, but we're not going to tell you who it is. We're going to spare you the details. We're going to save their reputation. Well, you just damaged your entire family's reputation. You're not exactly saving face here. You're basically planting the negative seed in the court of public opinion and tarnishing your family. So ever since they dropped that bombshell, everyone has been waiting on pins and needles. Who's the racist? Who's the royal racist? Who could it be? So everyone's always having a question. And it's very, very dangerous, especially when it's aimed at the royal family, at the future King of England. So this author, Christopher Anderson, who has been covering the royal family for over 50 years, uh, working for Time Magazine and such, has recently, of course, released a brand new book called Brothers and Wives, Inside the Private Lives of William, Kate, Harry, and Meghan. Well, he seems to have quite a bit of insider information, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But according to this author... He states that it was, in fact, Prince Charles who made the comments about Archie's skin color. But according to the author, it was not meant in a racist overtone. It was actually a very innocent musing over a breakfast that he had with his wife, Camilla. So according to the author, this conversation uh, was a very innocent musing that happened on November 27, 2017 between Prince Charles and Camilla. This was the actual date that the royal engagement was announced uh, between Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They said that Prince Charles and his wife were simply sitting at breakfast and Charles supposedly wondered, I wonder what the children will look like. Camilla was somewhat taken aback by the question and replied, well, absolutely gorgeous, I'm certain. Now, according to the author, Charles then leans in and lowers his voice and says, I mean, what do you think their children's complexion might be? Now, this is, of course, according to the author's well-placed source. Of course, he doesn't name the source, right? But again, the, the author is claiming that Charles did not make this as a racist comment. He states that the men in gray, the palace courtiers, you know, they kind of spread gossip. Uh, there's an old boys club apparently in the palace that were kind of twisting the intention 
extension of Charles's words and that by the time that it got back to Prince Harry, it had been uh, changed completely to where Harry had a very tense conversation with his father um, in regards to the comments. Now, according to the royal commentator, he states that Prince Charles told him, you're being sensitive, you're over, you know, you're overthinking it, I didn't mean it in that way. But of course, by that time, you know, Prince Harry being the overprotector, being Meghan's flying monkey, if you watched my previous video, you'll see how Meghan set Harry up to be her flying monkey. He was in a royal rage and flying to protect his lady. Now, of course, Harry was probably relaying the message back to Meghan, and Meghan probably told him, yep, they're racist. That's right. And this had to have been like Christmas morning for Meghan because as we know, the royal rift between the brothers actually started when they were dating and Prince William told his brother, hey, slow your roll, slow down, you're rushing, we don't know this lady, let's take your time. So Harry has always kind of been a hothead, kind of spoiled, kind of likes to do his own thing. And of course, by this time, Meghan had her claws in him. So Meghan was always looking for a way to kind of enter herself in as the main person in Harry's life because as a narcissist, they have to be Queen Bee. So she wanted to make sure she got in there and she, boy, she judged herself right in between the brothers and really put a wedge in that relationship. I also believe that the royals were concerned about Meghan, you know, the whole thing with her father and the letter and the fact that she refused to apologize and meet with her father and kind of squash the drama. Instead, she did that ill-fated letter and the dear daddy that we all know about in the lawsuit. I mean, she just caused such a royal ruckus. So when she found out that supposedly somebody was commenting about the skin color of her future son, boy, that was just the card that she needed, the race card. It was Christmas morning for Miss Megan because now she had the final straw to dig at the royals, a final straw to make Harry say, okay, Harry, we need to drop this popsicle stand and head out to Montecito. Now, I also have another theory on this. I actually don't believe that Harry and Meghan really wanted to leave the royal family 100%. I believe they were trying to do the half in, half out, because they were already working behind the scenes with Elton John's husband on Netflix projects. They were already trying to get her the Disney voiceover. And again, by this time, she was already colluding with the authors of Finding Freedom. This was all happening while she was still a senior royal. They were still doing this under the guise of being, you know, the Sussexes, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. So in my opinion, Harry and Meghan went to the Queen and said, look, this is what we're going to do, and this is what we're not going to do, and this is how it's going to be, Granny. And she said, uh, no, thank you. You're either in or you're out. They kind of um, tried to play chess with Her Majesty, and they underestimated the Queen. And she checkmated their ass out of the palace. And they went on and made that little statement saying, oh, because we want to have, be you know, financially independent and, you know, we just want to try new things. We're going to leave the royal family. However, we're still going to be very much in collaboration with Her Majesty and, and the palace. Well, when had they been in collaboration since they left? Uh, never. The palace has distanced themselves from the Sussexes completely. They severed ties. So the Sussexes were trying to save face and made it seem like it was their idea to leave because they wanted financial freedom. Well, when she went on the Oprah Winfrey show, all of a sudden, it was a different story. It was, we left because of our freedom. We left because we were scared. We were left because we weren't going to have royal protection for our son, who just happens to be biracial, and they weren't going to give him a prince title. Well, all of that was bullcrap, and they didn't say any of that when they made their announcement when they were actually leaving for Megxit. They only said after the fact, right? There's also... The fact that supposedly Charles made this comment back in 2017, right after the royal engagement, but according to Meghan, on the Oprah Winfrey interview, it was stated several times 
on several occasions and several conversations about how dark Archie was going to be while she was pregnant. But then she let it slip that she wasn't even there for the conversation. She was getting secondhand information. So we all know what happens when you play the game of telephone. By the time you have a secret and it gets to the tenth person, they have a completely different version of the facts. So Megan doesn't care because Megan, all she needed to hear was the word racism. And she used that to her advantage to manipulate and twist that whole situation. And then on the Oprah Winfrey show, they flung it at the royal family as a weapon. If it even happened, which we don't even know if it did, but if it happened, they used it as a weapon to tarnish and hurt the royal family because that is Megan's MO. You don't give Megzy what she wants, she's going to hurt you in the public. She, she, that's what she does to her family. She did to her father, her sister, and of course now Harry's family. See, Harry's picking up this bad habit of trashing his family like Megan. You know what's that old saying is you start to hang around with trash and you start to stink? Well, Harry's starting to stink like Megan. They're becoming one. He's, be he's becoming Megan's husband. He's no longer Prince Harry. He's, he's Megan's husband because he's basically her flying monkey. He's doing her bidding. And he's so dumb, he doesn't realize it. She doesn't even have to do anything anymore. She just kind of pulls him or gives him a look, and he's off flying, doing her dirty work. And he thinks he's protecting his woman, but he doesn't realize he's severing ties with his family. Now, according to the author Anderson, the final nail in the coffin were, uh, that made Harry and Meghan want to leave the royal family was that Harry felt erased from the royal family. According to the author, Christopher Anderson, he stated that it was during the Queen's uh, Christmas address in December of 2019 that a picture of Meghan, Harry, and baby Archie was removed from the background of the Queen's speech. Then in the background, she just had a picture of her father, her husband, Prince Charles, and of course the Cambridges and that she told the director to remove that photo from the background. Well, if you, if you know anything about the queen and a lot of her photos, in the background she always has the line of succession. So she had her father, herself, Charles, and William. It would not make any sense to have a picture of Harry there. If she had a picture of Harry there, she would have to have a picture of Edward and Sophie and Andrew and their children and Anne and their children, but she just has the line of succession. But again, the author is trying to make it seem like Her Majesty slighted Harry on purpose. But at that point, Her Majesty was not slighting Harry. What people don't realize was the Queen gave Harry and Meghan an entire year to decide if they wanted to leave the royal family. She didn't just kick them out. She was like, let's visit this back in 12 months. We'll let you go do your thing. And after 12 months, we will revisit this decision. And if you decide to leave the royal family for good, then that's fine. But she gave them the opportunity to possibly come back. But of course, we all know they destroyed any chance of coming back with all of the woke speeches and the politics that they got themselves involved in. And Charles supported him through spring of 2020. So again, you know, they're not telling the truth here. You know, they, they don't give the queen and the royal family enough credit that they were very supportive of them, even after Meghan and Harry were a disaster. The royal family still stood by them. So I don't believe that Her Majesty in December of 2019 erased Harry on purpose. She was still very much his grandmother. She still very much loved him. And I believe she mentioned him in one of her speeches. I don't believe for one minute that she did that in a very uh, maniacal way, as according to this unnamed source that Christopher Anderson has in his book. So what do you guys think? Do you think Charles was the royal family member who made those quote-unquote racist comments in regards to Archie's skin color? Do you believe the author of this book that Harry was erased from his family? 
do you believe anything that the Sussexes say? Leave your comments, guys, down below. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I really do appreciate you, and I look forward to the comments because you guys are awesome and you are so insightful. If you would be so inclined as to please help me to grow my channel by like, sharing, and subscribing, I would greatly appreciate it. And please be sure to check me out on my other social media accounts as well as royaldailytea.com. As always, have an awesome and amazing day.